Hello everyone, this is Jim Kozak from the Davy Resource Group's IT Services Department. In this installment of the TreeKeeper 8 video tutorial series, we're going to cover primarily a short video on finding sites, but I also want to cover some of the topics that we've touched on before, such as customizing your view, uh, turning on and off layers, adding information to the high-level callout, and filtering for data in the site matches screen. Uh, but we'll cover all of those topics really through one basic task, which is finding sites. And finding sites will be broken down into a data search, uh, modifying the data search by using a select by rectangle, refining the data search in the data search window, and also creating quick filters from data searches. I'm logged into the TreeKeeper system as a TreeKeeper user, and in order to conduct a data search, I'll select the search tool from the tool tray, and I'm going to conduct a search for all of the trees that are on Catlin Court. I'll start typing Catlin, and it'll, the system will auto-complete for me, and I can go ahead and conduct my search by selecting the search tool. I see that when I select the search tool, the system will zoom me down into the closest extent that I can see all of the sites that are on Catlin Court. Uh, so these are sites that have an address of Catlin Court, and you'll notice that there's a few sites here that uh, if I were to check on what those sites are, those sites are actually on Hollister Drive, but they're on side two on this side, and Hollister Drive side away on this side. So, uh, in order to capture those sites, I can go about that a couple of different ways. One would be simply to select a select by rectangle and add those sites to my search. So now I have all of the sites that are on Catlin Core. Uh, another way that I could go about conducting that search is if I switch back over to the search tool, uh, what I can do is I can actually search for the on-street Catlin Core. And if I go ahead and hit search there, that is going to give me all of the trees that are on Catlin Court. So that will include the sites that are that have an address for Hollister Drive, but have sites that are on Catlin Court by being on the side of the property. So once I've refined my search, I have the option of creating a quick filter from that search to make it easy for me to bring that search up again. Um, anytime I want to create a quick filter, uh, it's as easy as conducting a search and then saving that search as a new quick filter. I can give that quick filter a name, so I'll call it Catlin Court, and I can restrict the filter to uh, admins only, myself only, or no user restriction, which means it's basically viewable to everybody. Uh, this one I'm going to restrict to me only because it's going to be my own personal filter that I'm just using for this instance. I'm going to select an icon and I'll go ahead and hit submit and the system will tell me that the filter was added. So now if I were to uh, clear my search and I wanted to get back to that saved search easily and quickly, uh, I can just go ahead and select my filter and that'll bring back the search for me. Um, as a note, searches are also editable, so I'm able to edit the quick filter. I could change the name, uh, I could change the icon. Uh, so for example, I'll change the icon to the oak leaf, and that is my saved search. Now that I've conducted my data search, and I've refined my data search, and I've created a quick filter for it, uh, a few other things I can do to customize my view. Uh, one is uh, I could turn on the Google Aerial Photography. So that will allow me to, to view those sites with the Google Aerial Photography turned on. Uh, if I find that the other street trees are confusing my view, uh, I have the ability to turn off those street trees. So really, I'm only viewing the sites that met my filtered criteria. Uh, a few other customizations that I can make. So um, we just talked about turning on and off layers. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about adding information to the high-level callout. So that, for example, if uh, I were to switch from site to site here, I'm going to get the callout box that matches that site. This is supposed to be high-level information, or what I sometimes refer to as at-a-glance information that I want to see about any given tree. Uh, if, for example, in my uh, process, 
having the site ID available is important to me. I could add site ID to the high level callout box. And the way that I would do that is I would go to the administration center um, and under permissions management, I'll go ahead and edit the permissions for administrators. When I go into the administrator and select the permissions management, you can see I have the ability to hide certain features, make them view only, or show them on view and pop-up. So for site ID, I'm gonna go ahead and select view and pop-up, hit save, and close. And when I close out of the administration center, the next site that I go to view will have the site ID information on there. So now I, I would be able to search for site ID or be able to reference site ID uh, at a glance. So I can see the site IDs for, for all the sites that I'm looking at. Uh, so that's another way to customize your view. Um, in addition to being able to add the high level information to the callout box, uh, I, can't, I do have a fair amount of uh, filtering and organization ability on the site matches screen as well. So I'll close the tool tray and I'll take a look at the site matches screen. And I have the ability here to, uh, for example, if I were only looking for a specific address like 1087, I can filter for 1087. Uh, if I were actually only looking for uh, maples, uh, I could filter for the maples. Uh, additionally here, I've got my user set up to see the trees in, with the botanical name. Uh, I can customize that as well. So back in the administration center, uh, if I go into my user management and I go down to Kozak, uh, I can edit my user information to show the trees with the common name first. So I'll go ahead and hit save on that. And when I come back to my site matches screen, I now have my species showing with the common name first rather than the botanical name. Uh, some other types of filters that I can do is, you know, if I were only looking for the maple trees that were uh, seven inches in diameter, um, I could filter down to the seven inch diameter maple trees. Uh, so now I have that filtered set, filtered down to basically what just the information that I'm looking for. Another new feature that the TreeKeeper 8 system has that is applicable to really any information that you're looking at, whether it's the site screen, the call screen, the work screen, or the work order screen, is you have the ability to use um, this hamburger menu up in the upper right hand corner of the screen uh, in which you can export data as a CSV, all data or only visible data. Um, so if I've done a filtered search and I only want to export the visible data, I can only export the visible data. I also have the ability to turn on and off different attributes uh, to view in the site matches screen. Um, so for example, if, uh, if I, as I had said before, site ID is important to me, I can select site ID and now site ID will be uh, one of the fields available. I also have the ability to move the site ID a column uh, around to where it makes more sense for me to have. That is a quick overview of finding sites, of doing a data search, refining my data search, using a select by rectangle, incorporating quick filters, turning on and off layers, adding information to the high level callout box, and filtering data in the site matches screen, as well as exporting data to a variety of formats whether it's the entire data set you search for or just the sites that you filter for. In the next TreeKeeper 8 video tutorial, we'll run through the same search that I've done here, but we'll talk about adding calls to individual sites, calls to groups of sites, work records to individual sites, as well as groups of sites, and adding those records to work orders uh, if, we so, if we choose to. Thank you for watching this installment of the TreeKeeper 8 video tutorial series on finding sites and customizing your view. Please stay tuned for future video tutorials. Thanks again. Bye-bye.